out will you these are the graphs of some functions and we call them the basic functions because they are they certainly are not the only functions but they're the functions a whole lot of stuff is built on that you've had so far so this is the day that we go back and analyze them and here are some analysis sheets for you Okay. Um, see, if, if you have, I'm going to write these the way you're, you're more accustomed to seeing them. This would be like y equals 1.5. y equals one and a half. It's a horizontal line going through the uh, y-axis at 1.5. Professor, I think we can only see your face at the moment. I shared my screen. Oh dear, another problem. I'll share it again. All right, let's unshare and then share. What about now? It looks like it's still just your um, the face you use for your name. Um, it's see. working for for me. I can see the uh, the example. Thank I can see it. Too. Maybe it's just mine. When I first came in, it opened up two different windows and I had to close one to be able to see the. The work. That is true. Everybody gets two windows, so maybe you've just clicked on the wrong one. I hope that's all it is. I'll keep working on it. OK, good. All right, here we've got the function y equals x. This is like the mama and daddy of all straight lines. y equals x. And you can see that the domain and range and increasing on and, and constant on and decreasing on and all of that is there as well. And then some things you don't know about odd and even functions. This is the absolute value function. As you can see, the outstanding thing about the absolute value function is it comes to a sharp point. So to that extent, it's different from y equals x squared. Gotta mute everybody. Okay. Um, 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 yeah. Now, y equals x squared and the absolute value of x behave pretty similarly, but not exactly alike. This is shaped more like a U, and this is always shaped like a V. The absolute value function always comes to a sharp point. And the uh, even when you have a really skinny parabola, it does not come to a sharp point. Um, here we have y equals the square root of x. Notice, well, all of these are in their home positions. So in its home position, it starts at 0, 0 and rises to the right forever and ever. This is the graph of y equals x to the third. y equals x squared and y equals x to the third are uh, proved to be very important last time when we discussed end behavior also called the leading term test. In this book, 
in this version of my math lab, they uh, they call it the leading term test. But what what does the uh, what does the function do out on the ends? And as we said last week, uh, that's based on y equals x squared. And y equals x to the third. Then we have the cube root. And it's kind of like that. It's not really flat. But it's one of those cases where uh, it is slanted, but it, it gets so close to the y axis that you can't really see that it's slanted. OK, so these are the functions we're going to be working with the first part of today. Nope. Here's what we're going to be dealing with. These are, like I said, um, yeah, these are in their home position, but how boring would it be if they just stayed there all the time? So what we're going to do today is talk about how it's a lot like writing computer code. How do you code these functions to be seen in different places? That's what we're going to talk about. This is what we're going to talk about. And we're going to need this. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about how to shift those functions that we just saw up and down. So let's look at y equals x. Well, I, I would rather have that black. Let's go to y equals x. I'm going to graph it real fast. y equals x. That's all there is to it. And there's the line y equals x in its home position. Notice the home position most of the time has it crossing at 0, 0. Well, how can we move it? Vertical shifts can move it directly up and directly down. That's all a vertical shift does. Can be a little boring. So suppose I have, and for those of you who have had this before, well, actually it's covered a little bit in intermediate algebra, but not a whole lot. If I want to shift this graph right here up three units, then the way I code that is with a plus three on the right end. Okay, so if we wrote this as f of x equals x. Then this function would be f of x plus 3. Here's the f of x part. Professor? Yes? What do you mean by the right end? I mean, it's at the right end. The uh, thank you. The vertical shift Thank you for asking. If you've got a function and you want to shift it up three units or down three units, then where you write that, regardless of what this looks like, 
is with a plus three out here on the right side, the far right side. That's where you write it. So for instance, if our f of x is all right, and um, up three units, shift up. Okay, if we have f of x equals x, then to shift it up three units, on the right-hand side of the x, I would write plus three. And if we have the function f of x equals the square root of x, and I wanna move that up three units, I would write the square root of x, that's the function, plus three out here. And that's the meaning of that. Um, how about the absolute value? If I want to shift that up vertically, I would type the function and then put a plus three out on the right side. That's what I mean. So what if X was on the left and Y was on the right? Would we then write it on the left? Uh, to write something as a function, you've got to have Y on the left. Okay. Okay, so anyway, that's what I'm going to do right here, <laughs> except it disappeared. I'm going to go back to y equals 3 and come down to y2, and I'm going to type the function y equals x, but then to move it up three units, I put a plus 3 over there. And what that does is vertically shift this up three units. And that's called a vertical shift. Now, let's move on to this. Here's y equals the square root of x in its home position. Oops, I don't want it there. Second x squared x. Okay, there's y equals the square root of x in its home position. If I don't want it there, if I want to shift it up five units, then I'm going to make a new function, because it wouldn't be the same as the old, that has the square root of x plus three. Oh, whoop, five. I wanted to shift it five, didn't I? I'm getting bored with three. I'm going to come over here and come out to the end, to the far end. You have to not be under the function, but at the far right end. Plus five. Do you see how the plus five is not under the square root radical? And there it is up there. I moved it up five units. And we can do the same thing for down. For instance, Suppose I want to graph x squared. 
Okay, x squared. Y equals x squared. Probably the most familiar graph to students. Um, suppose I want to shift that down five units. So if f of x equals x squared, and I want to shift it up five units, I would make another function x up, uh, down. down. I'm going to go down, don't I? Down would be minus. Okay. So I come over here. No, I don't do that. I go there. I come down to y2 and I'll type x squared minus 5. And then I hit graph. And there it is. Here's y equals x squared in its home position. And here's y equals x squared shifted down five units. So since vertical means straight up or straight down, all I've done is I've taken this and I've moved it down. And so that's the way it is with all functions. Suppose I want to graph y equals x to the third. Or how about the cube root? We need to practice the cube root. Go to math. And cube root. And x. Now it's important that you come to the outside of the radical because vertical shifts are never under the function part. They're always out at the right end of the line, right end of the line that you're writing. So you people with the older operating system need to close your parentheses there. Um, people with this system have to uh, click on the right arrow key to make sure you're not under the cube root radical. And if I want to shift this, well, let's look at it in its home position first. There it is. Now, if I want to move that up four units, then, then again, I'll type that, and this, and this, and right arrow key, plus four. Now, suppose I also want to drop it by four units, vertical shift down four units, then I would type math four x, either right arrow key or close parentheses, minus four, graph. There you go. That's what vertical shifting is all about, and that's where you write it. And this is the symbol for taking any function and shifting it up three units. F of X plus three. With the plus three, see all the function stuff would be written here, and then you'd have a plus three stuck out on the end. or a minus three, depending on what you're doing. Here I would have the cube root of x 
moved down four. That's not negative, that's a minus. But I'm trying so to make X I'm trying to make very clear that um, this is not under the radical. Go ahead. So, do we need to put is it X under the square root or under oh, the, yes, the cube yes. root or three? Yeah. There you go. Don't know why I did that. Guess I had three on the brain. Okay, clear. Clear. Those are the very easiest transformations. Moving directly up, moving directly down. Okay. Am I doing something wrong to get an error message on the cubed problems? Maybe. I would have to see what it is you're doing. Let's let's keep on trying. What does the error message say? Um, it just says quit. Uh, hmm. Does it ask you? Uh, um, uh, does it give you any other choice? Um, let me try another one real fast. Um, it just says one for quit or two for go to. Do two. Click on two. So what, where's it going? Then it just goes back to where you can uh, plot the points. Well, now, what do you mean? Or where you can go in and put um, where it has y, y1 equals the same screen that you're on. Okay, but y1 equals what for you? Because that's what's giving you the error. Um, I put uh, three cubed um, square root x minus three. Um, so where on the line is the cursor blinking? Um, under the square root on the X. Uh, well, actually, it's a cube root. Or, or yes, yes. Um, I don't know why. Did you click on this button right here? Oh, I did not. So maybe that's the problem. I bet it is. Yep, that's the problem. Very good. Very Thank good. you. I've done that because that looks like an X, the times, times button. All right, now I'm going to write our basic functions here, um, the ones that have X's in them. Y equals X y equals well y equals x y equals x squared y equals the absolute value of x y e and we need to spend more time here so you can learn where that is also um y equals x to the third i'm going out of order from that sheet but i'm kind of going by memory here y equals the square root of x, and y equals the cube root of x. My goal, my goal 
is to stretch these. Stretch them up. Now let's see what I mean by that. So the um, really the easiest one to do, I'm going to do x squared first because you'll see. So cool, there's our basic graph. Now I want to stretch this. Suppose you have a toy bunny and it's elastic and you're pulling it. Or you've got knee socks that have drawn up and you're trying to stretch them, stretch them up to your knee. That's what I'm gonna do to X squared. And how I do it is this. However much I want to stretch it, let's make it three. Stretch. Now I'm going to write this the way your book often does. Stretch by factor of Three. OK. This is how I'm going to write it. Y equals three times X squared. All right, and look what happens. It's as though this graph has gotten stretched up. Notice that none of the X coordinates have changed. Zero, zero is still at zero, zero. But it's like an invisible two hands came down and stretched the line up. It does that by taking all the XY points and multiplying the Y coordinates by that three. That's what's really happening. There aren't any invisible hands pulling it up. Really, this three is multiplying all the Y coordinates in Y equals X squared. Now, I can show you. If X equals one, in the basic basic graph, we have we have the point one one right there. But in y equals three x squared, we have the point x equals one, y equals three. So that would actually be the difference. So here, the point, the point one one changes to one three, and the the point two four changes to two twelve. The X coordinates stay the same, but the Y coordinates get multiplied. So over here, the point 39 becomes the point 327 because nine was multiplied by three and so on. If I want to stretch Y equals the absolute value of X, three units, or what, who says we have to do it three? Oh, because I wrote a factor of three. Okay, y equals three times the absolute value of x. So let's graph the absolute value of x by going to math 
and then it's not there. Imagine. So we have to hit the right arrow key to go over to num, and there's abs for absolute value right there at the top. So I click enter. There are my absolute value bars. I'll type X and then my right arrow key. Or if you show abs uh, parenthesis and you type X, you have to close your parenthesis. All right, so here is the absolute value of X in its home position. Now, to graph three times the absolute value of X, that is to vertically stretch this graph by a factor of three, three, math, right arrow key, enter, X, and then come to the outside. There. It's as though somebody took this in, like, like old fashioned rabbit ears that people used to have on them. Stretched it up. And the same thing would be true of these. To stretch this up and make it more vertical. Clear, clear. Okay, to graph y equals x to the third, I type x caret three. And then to come down, you hit the right arrow key just like in my math lab. There's y equals, y equals x to the third power, y equals x cubed. Now, if I'm going to stretch this by a factor of three, I come down here and I type three, and then x caret three. See, it, it, it got stretched. So it's higher for all intents and purposes and lower. It's closer to the Y axis because it got stretched. And to stretch this, this would be Y equals three times the square root of X. And to stretch this, you would have Y equals three cube root X. Well, if you can stretch them, you can shrink them. Well, let's talk about what is it that stretches the functions, the graphs of the functions. What is it that, that stretches the graphs of the, of the functions? Well, the fact that this number the number in front of the function is a number greater than one. So if we wanted to write it as some kind of formula, we would have a times f of x. And if a is greater than, strictly greater than one, if a is one, then there is no vertical stretch. It's just the regular function. 
but this number is greater than one. You could put five million. That'd be terrible, but you could. Now, how can I shrink it? Well, it, if I wanted to shrink my functions, shrink by a factor of, let's say, one half. And it's easier to write it as 0.5. One half and 0.5 are the same. Then for y equals x, I would have y equals 0.5 x. If this number is between 0 and 1. So for a times f of x, let's write it up here, a times the function. So you've got a number multiplying the function. Now that number is going to be between zero and one, but not equaling zero and not equaling one. In other words, it's a fraction. Professor. Yes. Could we not achieve the same effect by dividing by two? We're going to get there. Okay. Um, so y equals x squared, that would give us y equals 0.5 x squared. Let me get rid of that a over there. And, and you could keep doing that with any number, any number smaller than one, but positive. y equals x to the third, y equals 0.5 x to the third. We're shrinking this by a factor of one half. y equals the square root of x, y equals 0.5 times the square root of x. So let's, let's actually do that so you can kind of see. Here's y1 equals the square root of x. Okay, now I'm going to stretch it by a factor of three. So let's go back up here for a minute. Three square root of X. There, you've stretched it up. You haven't lifted it up. It's not a vertical shift. Zero, zero is still at zero, zero, but it's like you stretched it up. And if I want to shrink it by a factor of one half, 0.5, square root x. Here, look at it, it's all shrunk down. The X coordinates are in the same place. But now, for instance, in Y equals the square root of X, the point one one is now the point one one half. This number, whether it's big or little, multiplies all the y-coordinates 
and leaves the X coordinates completely alone. So we've talked about a vertical shift where you physically move the graph up and down. And a vertical stretch and shrink where you you keep the graph in the same place, but you stretch it up or you shrink it down. Now I've gotten so paranoid over the last week, I want to make sure I'm recording, yes, it says you're recording, okay. All right, well, what else can you do with this little bugger? You can reflect it. And these vertical, vertical shifts, vertical stretches and shrinks and vertical reflections are the easiest because once you get to the horizontals, it becomes decidedly more difficult. So you're gonna love the verticals and hate the horizontals. But let's get to the last vertical we're gonna talk about. Here's our list of basic functions. Y, well, we're not going to do Y equals C, but Y equals X, Y equals <laughs> X squared, Y equals the absolute value of X, Y equals the square root of X, Y equals the cube root of X, one, two, three, four, five. And I know I've left out some, but that's good enough. We are now going to reflect these guys across the x-axis, which also is can be thought of as just flipping them upside down. So clear, clear, clear. Y equals X squared shows this beautifully. They all do. Y equals X squared. Here's our basic Y equals X squared graph. If I want to reflect this across the X axis, and that's the, the name of what we're about to do, reflection across the x-axis. In other words, make it go upside down. There's y equals x squared. Let's flip it upside down. I'm going to go down to y2. I'm going to put a negative, not a minus, a negative sign, x squared. No. We just turned it upside down. Yep, that's all it is. If I want to reflect any function vertically across the x-axis, we'll rewrite this as y equals negative x y equals negative x squared, y equals negative the absolute value of x, y equals negative the square root of x, and y equals negative the cube root of x. And you can turn it upside down. Okay, now, here's something very, very important. 
a combo. That's my name for it. Suppose your basic function is y equals the square root of x. And then we could let that be y1 and suppose that I make y2 equals negative three times the square root of x. You would be tempted to say that the vertical stretch is negative three. vertical stretch is negative three, it's not. So this is a very big deal and you will encounter it on the test and on the final. That negative sign in front is always a reflection across the X axis, always. It is not part of the vertical stretch. What you have here is two transformations working on the same function. And you're going to have a lot more. That negative sign is the reflection across the x-axis. And the three is a vertical stretch. So don't get trapped. That's a very common error. Okay, so those are the vertical transformations. We have a shift up and down. We have a stretch and a shrink vertically. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And we have a vertical reflection, kaboom, upside down. These don't affect the function itself. A square root is still a square root. Notice that x squared stays the same. The absolute value of x stays the same. The square root of x stays the same. The cube root of x stays the same. The action is occurring either in front with the reflection across the x-axis or the shrink or the stretch. Those occur in front of the function itself. So that you could just as easily say, three times f of x, like we did here, or 0.5 times f of x, or negative f of x, or in this case, negative three times f of x. f of x stays completely intact. So a vertical shift up 
would be f of x plus 3. A vertical shift down would be f of x minus 5. The function part stays entirely the same and is not affected by vertical movement or vertical coding. It's not the way it is with horizontal. 